I want to encourage those people who have expressed that they want to leave the U.S. but they can't for some reason. Uh, they feel frustrated and stuck there. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this short. They have expressed that uh, for some reason, financial reasons, uh, they don't know where to go, they don't know how they would make a living, uh, or they have um, many people who depend on them, um, or some other legal reason that they can't leave. I just want to encourage you to pray about it, to ask the Father to guide you. If it's His will, anything can be done. Um, I suggest that you read, uh, go back and read Exodus, and um, the Exodus of Israel, the whole Exodus, uh, everything that they went through, because that's a blueprint for our lives, um, believe it or not. Everything from leaving Egypt, going through the Red Sea, and then wandering the desert for 40 years. Just look at all the things that they had to go through. And it's similar to this, is leaving Egypt is like leaving the U.S. Um, or leaving your country. Going through the Red Sea represents your baptism. Um, hopefully you're baptized in Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, so I just want to rec recommend that you pray, ask for guidance, ask for wisdom, ask for protection, um, that the doors would be open for you if that's what uh, our Father's will is for you. Uh, because it is possible. Uh, it's, I know it seems impossible. But don't feel rushed. Uh, and I wouldn't do anything rash. Make a plan. Take your time. Plan it out well. You're going to need your finances and some savings to be able to live on if you're to leave your country. Uh, unless you have someone who's going to receive you and help you get set up uh, well. Now that happens for some people. There's a lot of different options out there. If you're from the U.S. and you speak English fluently, even though you don't consider yourself to be an English teacher, and you might even think that your English isn't even very good, uh, just the fact that you're a native speaker, uh, you can be an English teacher in most countries around the world, unless English is already their spoken language. Um, so I recommend that you, if you want to do that, because that's a job waiting for you in almost all countries where English is not the first language, because everyone still wants to learn English. So you can go online and get a TESOL, T-E-S-O-L certificate. It costs from anywhere between $200 to $500. Um, you can go online and take an online course and receive that certificate. That will help to open doors for you and give you some confidence, too, if you wanted to become an English teacher. Um, you can also become a caretaker. Uh, look into that caretaker. There's different t kinds of opportunities out there where people have a small motel or a vacation home that they can't stay in, and it's in a foreign country. They can't be there all the time, and they need somebody uh, who can watch it for them. A lot of those people are Americans or foreigners from Europe or England, and they, for some reason they would prefer to have uh, someone like you to watch over their place. Of course, they're going to interview you and the more credentials you have, the better it is, like a college education or something like that. The other thing is if you have a college education, you could join the Peace Corps. That's a, a way to get out of the country for at least two years. Um, and uh, there's just a lot of opportunities out there. Look for people, get in touch with as many people as possible, ask them, save up, study, learn a second language. Obviously, the second language of the country where you're planning to go to. Um, I have a preference for Latin America uh, because I speak Spanish. I studied Spanish in college and have a degree in that and it, it uh, makes it easier if you speak the language of the country that you're going to. Um, you don't have to speak it fluently, but you, it's best if you speak it somewhat before you go there uh, so you're not just thrown into the, uh, into the water. Um, so. Uh, I, I wanted to address specifically, though, this uh, uh, the feeling of frustration. Um, don't feel frustrated, and and also people feel like I have to leave now. I have to leave now. That that feeling that can help you eventually. Because some people feel like oh, I'll leave whenever it suits me, or I just. But it'll pretty much. They, they accept that America's Babylon, maybe, but they just feel like no urgency to leave. Um, they just feel like I'm going to be protected right here where I am. I, I hope that happens for you. Uh, that doesn't seem what the scriptures say. 
it seems to say that everyone is going to, everything is going to be destroyed in Babylon and nothing will be left. And not one soul will be left. Read January, Jeremiah 50, and chapter 51, and read um, uh, all the other areas in my other videos that I talk about it in Isaiah and Habakkuk and in uh, Revelation. Revelation 17, 18, and 19. It doesn't seem like anyone's going to make it alive. And that we're told to get out seven different times. I have that in another video. Uh, get out and flee and get out of Babylon. Um, but at the same time, I still think that you should take your time, um, have a plan, investigate it well. Uh, there, there has this whole idea that America, there's going, they're going to declare martial law or they're going to do this to you or close the borders or take this away from you. Granted, all those things could happen, but having that panicked feeling is not going to help you. I think it will just make you, um, cause you to take, uh, make a wrong decision. So take your time, save, and plan, uh, and investigate and research this, the whole issue, and ask the Father to be the one that opens the door for you. Granted, you will eventually have to step out in faith, but you want to do it as as well prepared as possible uh, and there is no reason to be hasty um, I think that I will start to make uh, videos that one should be hasty when the war with Iran finally starts um, because again that's just my view I'm not a prophet or anything it's just my understanding of, of prophecy and I feel like the Daniel 8 prophecy Please read that and see my videos about that. That will be the time when, when America and Israel, one or the other or both, attack Iran and that war starts. That will be the time that you should um, start to uh, get moving. Uh, at that, and I still don't think that you would have to leave that very same day that the war starts. But I think that that, if any, is a time that uh, it, it would be important to start making your plans to get out of Babylon. Again, now if you're thinking, well, I'm just going to wait for that to happen. Uh, remember, I'm just a man. Uh, I'm just one person. Uh, I don't have some divine uh, word. I'm just doing my best to study the Bible and give you my opinion. But you are ultimately responsible for your understanding of the Bible, too. And you have to look at all the sources out there. Uh, and, and trust the Holy Spirit and trust the Father guiding you and leading you. Take everything with a grain of salt. You're responsible for your decisions, as we all are. Uh, so, I hope this did more good than, than bad and didn't confuse you more. Um, but uh, just make your plans, study, pray like crazy, ask the Father for guidance and help and and when you do that, it's been my experience that when I've asked the Father for help in, in what looks like a desperate situation, He puts those people there for you. He brings those people to you, the good people. And, and hopefully He'll give you eyes to see, uh, you know, and wisdom to be able to recognize the bad people. Because there's a lot of bad people out there, too, that want to deceive you and take advantage of you. But have to be careful that anyone who seems to have their hand out looking for your, your money, um, Sorry to say, but uh, you need to be skeptical of those people, too. Uh, so hopefully I can talk more about this. I just want to encourage you and let you know that if I could do it and many others, I know many people who have left the U.S. and they've gone to many different countries. Um, there's not just one specific place that is good for all of us. Uh, there's many places out there. And you might have to move from place to place. Prepare yourself for that mentally. That's what Israel went through. They, w they wanted to settle down and set up camp in one place, but the father had a different idea, and he moved them from place to place, and it wasn't even at regular intervals. Intervals. Sometimes they were in one place for a few weeks. Sometimes they were there for a few months. So uh, your life will be kind of like a wanderer until, uh, until Yeshua returns. So uh, Yahweh bless you.